we're going to be talking about all coins should you hold should you get rid of them what's going to happen to the market stay tuned for more when we discuss that the next bitcoin all-time high could be it for all coins that could be the last chance to sell these all coins at very high amounts and you may not want to miss out on that opportunity now this is an interesting topic it seems like bitcoin and to a certain extent ethereum has been hogging the headlines over the last few months and of course we had a few uh, bull signals for bitcoin in recent months which brings me to the question what do we do with altcoins what i'm saying is that if we see in 2019 or 2020 a new all-time high for bitcoin another bull run you typically will see a whole bunch of altcoins follow suite after that and that may be your final opportunity to get rid of some of them because there's just too many of them there's a lot of scams out there there's saturation in the market so let's have a look at the at the state of all coins and my views on that okay so bitcoin and ethereum seem to be carving out a niche as the store value um, and with ethereum the premier smart contract platforms what's going to happen to the rest of these coins i actually advise you to do your homework and look very specifically at just a few coins because we don't know what's going to happen we have no idea what will happen with a whole bunch of these other coins which sound great but you know the white papers mean nothing so in some cases they copied from some of the bigger projects um, the feasibility is highly questionable um, we see them pushed almost as pyramid schemes and scams so you have to you have to be wary of that and, and actually protect yourself um, as an investor I would say look to the technology you know the technology is what got me first interested into blockchain and then of course we saw how the value of the assets on top of the chain are actually climbing in value although it's cyclical there's, there's peaks and troughs and, and swings and things like that so what I'm saying is the following do your homework on every coin put a line in the sand in terms of an exit point this is very very important because if you don't do this when a particular asset um, enters a bull cycle of its own you will typically get so caught up in that bull cycle that you just won't let go okay and at the next bull run when when we expect many people are saying it could be in 2019 it'll probably be in 2020 we expect the Bitcoin cycle to now go upwards and hit this new high you will typically see a whole bunch of altcoins follow very closely after that that is what I'm saying is your key signal if you're not hundred percent comfortable if you're sitting here today and you regret holding some of these altcoins then this is when you want to just get out of them okay so let's unpack in even more detail what I believe are projects that have value and basically the rest where I'm not too keen on them So I would say that we're very early in the crypto world and you see a lot of amateurishness. You also see some things that are just comical. Remember in 2018 when the lead developer of um, Verge, whom for all we know could have been some kid in a basement, accidentally did something to the code and created a fork of the coin and Verge lost 25% in I think 24 hours. That is the state of the crypto world. It's very, very early. So I think smart contract platforms for me are the technological uh, use case behind blockchains, right? The ability to write decentralized applications that live all around the globe that cannot be stopped, cannot be killed, will be written for the good of mankind in some cases. Some person may write a smart contract that performs a certain function. It's not owned by a company or an organization or a government. It is there for the good of mankind 
That is, for me, very exciting about smart contracts. The question is, which smart contract platform? As you know, people are questioning on a daily basis the capability of Ethereum to scale. The next six months will be critical for Ethereum when Ethereum 2.0 comes out. And we hopefully see things like sharding, proof of stake, and many other improvements. And hopefully we see that scale. Depending on what happens there, this platform could really solidify itself as the premier smart contract platform for the world, or things could go south. I'm very positive on Ethereum. So I think if you're holding Ethereum, um, there's just so much momentum, but I'm still hoping for the best out of that upgrade. The question then comes to what about the other, the other smart contract platforms? You have EOS, you have NEO, which is very big in China, Tron, and then you have a project that sounds technically fantastic and is very popular in Japan, I believe, something called Cardano. And, but you know, it's still early days for a lot of those platforms. I believe that all of those platforms, because the smart contract nature of those platforms has something to offer the world, it's not really a, a gamble, I think, um, or it's a calculated gamble. I think there is, uh, you know, uh, a reason to believe that there is some value in those platforms. Once again, if you're holding one of those coins, like NEO, for example, and you're thinking, well, I don't see a lot of good news, I don't see a lot of development, I need to get out. Here's what I would do. Let's say you bought NEO, and I'm looking at, I'm looking at coin market cap right now. And I see NEO is sitting at, is that correct, $11, right? Let's call it $12. So the all-time high of a coin like NEO, um, if I just bring up the graph here, and that was about, sure, more than $120, $160. This is according to coin market cap, right? Now, that's a long way to go. So the potential profit on a platform like this is huge. If it gets to its previous highs, remember, Bitcoin is at $10,000. If it gets to 20000 the previous high, it's just doubling from here. This platform is going almost 16 times, or could go, let's call it 15 times. So whatever you invest now, if this platform gets to its all-time high, could go 15 times. The same with Cardano, the same... Ethereum's at around the $200 range. It was previously around, I think, $1,200, six times. So this is why people are investing in these platforms, traders. The potential rewards now, where we sit now, compared to something like Bitcoin, is a lot greater. But remember, you're carrying a lot more risk, right? But if you're looking to exit, which is what I want to discuss today, what do you do? Draw a line in the sand in terms of a price that you are comfortable with. If you don't do that, you will never exit the platform. Let's say I bought some NEO today at $10, and I'm very happy with a five times return on investment. I'm very happy if it gets to $50 or $60. So what I would do is I would actually put a sell command in, you know, at your exchange at that price and not just hold and hold and hold and ride. Because the thing is, it could go back to 160. And you, you're then going to hold for 170. And then if it crashes, you, you're never going to get, uh, you, you, you're probably never going to get out of it until it's too late. It may crash and still be 100, and you may still be 10 times up. But then you've got to be watching it carefully like a hawk every day. And a lot of us have day jobs. We're not, uh, you know, we're not professional traders. So, I think smart contract platforms, especially the ones that I've mentioned, have a good business case and, and a good value case, especially right now for the looks of things, Ethereum, Neo, Tron, EOS, and I would add Cardano. If there's one that I've left out, please let me know in the comments. But I think you're fairly safe looking at smart contract platforms. The next area of cryptocurrencies that I want to cover concerns privacy. And here, there are two coins, Monero and Zcash. Now, privacy, without going into 
the details of why you may need privacy because this is what becomes normally hugely controversial. I actually don't care, right? Because whatever people claim these coins are being used for and maybe they are being used for, remember, uh, previously people would use normal currency, right? And obviously it's not good, but I'm here to say that privacy is a use case. I believe that privacy coins have a use case, whether good or bad, and will have inherent value. The question is, do you want Monero, Zcash, or something else that may come? And once again, let me know if I've missed out on anything. So Monero seems to be in the lead at this point in time. And I'll tell you an, an interesting story. So Ricardo Spagni, uh, the guy who's the lead contributor for Monero, I actually worked with Ricardo Spagni when he was a junior developer at a company called iSolve. Uh, I think it was in 2006, 2007. I actually knew his father, Paolo Spagni, who was a project manager on various projects where I myself was a junior uh, developer at that stage. However, that's not the reason why I like Monero. I think it's taken the lead in the privacy coin space. I think right now the price is around the $80, $85 mark, and it did reach highs of about $400. So as an investment, if it gets back to its highs, you're looking at about five times growth, uh, which is attractive to anybody. And I think the use case is there. What about Zcash? Zcash for me technically sounds beautiful, and I won't claim to understand everything uh, amongst the technicals of Zcash. However, I do pick up some comments out there that its creator, Zuko, is merely creating this as a platform for self-enrichment. And in fact, two days ago, he put out a tweet saying that he wants uh, to raise more money for his platform. And of course, the Monero guys jumped on it, including Spagni um, on Twitter. So I would say that of the two, I like Monero, but I think Zcash also sounds technically very good and perhaps has some sort of use case as well. I don't think you're going to go wrong. And everything I've mentioned so far, smart con contract platforms, the major ones, and the privacy platforms are infinitely better than all these crazy coins that are coming around that we just don't know. You know they, they're probably scams, and they probably have zero use case and zero value, and you should jump out of them. The moment you can sell for more than what you got into, you should get rid of the rest. Now I'd like to talk about some other coins Basically, coins that could become cash. So remember, the original premise of Bitcoin was electronic cash. Bitcoin had some issues scaling. And now we're looking to something called the Lightning Network to deliver that scalability for Bitcoin. Whether it will be successful remains to be seen. It seems like Bitcoin is already successful as a store of value, gold 2.0. But what about electronic cash? I think that could be another use case. So there you have Litecoin, right? The more agile, younger brother of Bitcoin. You have the various forks of Bitcoin. Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin SV. You have something called Dash. I would do my research into these. And I think the four that I've mentioned seem to be, well, I'm not sure, quite sure about SV right? But the three that I've mentioned seem to be doing a lot in the background to basically become that electronic cash layer. This statement of mine now is one that normally opens up huge amounts of debate. Ethereum guys jump in, and technically I'm an Ethereum guy, and say, well, actually, Ethereum is not just a platform. Ether is cash. Of course it could be. Bitcoin maximalists will jump on and say, well, you know what? Once lightning comes around, Bitcoin is cash. You don't need anything else. Maybe. We'll see. But we don't know how it's going to... You know, I would be a fool to make any claims, right? So I'm trying to provide you with a very balanced view here. So those have some kind of use case potentially. If you know of another coin that seems to be doing a lot in terms of becoming cash 2.0, then let me know in the comments. The last area that I would like to cover comes in, uh, basically is interbank settlements 
bank payments, international money transfers. And there you have two coins, Ripple and Stellar Lumens. Okay? So Ripple for me is the coin or the platform, XRP is the, is the token, that I go backwards and forwards. Sometimes I'm very excited about it. Sometimes I get so despondent about it. And basically, um, you know, I, I, I sway from, from day to day. My biggest concerns around Ripple are basically that I don't feel it's as centralized as your traditional blockchain platforms. Ripple people will come and, you know, prove to you that it is actually quite decentralized. Uh, I meant decentralized, right? So that's the one thing. The second thing is you see a lot of news around Ripple. And to be fair, their PR and marketing is fantastic, right? They do a lot of partnerships. There's a whole host of organizations in Japan, banks in Japan, that claim, according to articles, to want to use Ripple as a settlement layer. I heard about a week ago that MoneyGram will now trial using Ripple as a settlement layer. This is all fantastic news. However, there's something that I want to mention firstly. If a platform is used for settlements or even electronic cash, it could become successful, but it doesn't mean that the value of the token rises to a very high value. Remember, if these are semi-centralized platforms, not fully decentralized platforms, in this case owned by the Ripple company, why would you want some sort of gas equivalent cost with Ethereum? You need to have that cost so that the network isn't flooded with useless assets. Okay? So that's the one thing top of my mind. But the other thing is it's controlled by a company. You know, they seem to be very powerful. They release at, at different intervals a whole bunch of Ripple onto the market, make themselves billions of, of dollars. I don't know. So on the one hand, you get all the good news with these articles. On the other hand, there's a lot of it that is not like other blockchain-based platforms. So I would do my research. With Ripple, we see that as Bitcoin has um, recovered from the lows of 2018, Ripple really hasn't. It's sitting around the $0.35 cents range. Bitcoin's at about $10,000. At one stage, when Bitcoin hit $20,000, Ripple went to around $4. Okay. So Ripple is far, more than eight times, nine times off, it's high. Is there a reason for that? I don't know. What I would do if you're holding something like Ripple and you're not comfortable, you, you bought in because of the hype, but you're not comfortable, uh, you, know, you think maybe it's too controlled and not really decentralized, I would put a line in the sand. If you bought for 60 cents and you're happy with $1.20, then sell at $1.20. Don't wait for $4.00. Ripple people will tell you that the coin could go to $384 or, or some number like that. The market cap would just be ridiculous if that happens. So I don't know if I believe that. Do your research and put your line in the sand where you're happy to exit and wait. As Bitcoin goes up over the next 12 months, um, some of these altcoins will get pulled through and you may get this opportunity to jump off. So I'll leave it there. I don't want to go too, on, too long in this video. Depending on the comments and feedback, I will do a follow-up. What I would like to do is get, do a follow-up going more into the technicals of the smart contract platforms and talk a little bit more about the interbank coins. Just actually, this reminds me. You also have something called Stellar Lumens. And I was bullish on Stellar Lumens because it was backed by IBM, a major technology company. But it seems to be operating in the same mode as Ripple. Woods International Interbank Settlements. We've had something called SWIFT for decades. We've also got MasterCard and Visa as major players. The one question I want to ask you is, is SWIFT, MasterCard and Visa just going to let somebody new come in and take over the space? You don't think they're going to fight for what they've had for all these decades? Number one. Number two, what if large organizations do large settlements cross-border with what becomes gold 2.0, the next store of value? And yes, I'm talking about something like Bitcoin. What if settlements could be done on a decentralized finance platform and the one of choice right now looks to be Ethereum? So do your homework very carefully, but if you've already bought into these platforms, 
once again, put your line in the sand and you'll find a comfortable exit point. Okay? So I don't think, just to summarize, I don't think all altcoins are bad. I think we're going to see a very exciting space in which blockchain delivers a lot for society. And I think you're not going to have one platform to rule them all. I mean, just the, the, the easy thing to imagine is that whatever platforms we have in the West, the Chinese may just choose to use different platforms, like we see with Neo. So don't write off those platforms. Um, so it's going to be interesting. Nobody can really make predictions, but I think you can make educated guesses. So I'll sign off for now. I hope that's given you some food for thought. And until next time, I'll be seeing you and happy trading, happy investing. Before I go, I have to get my dog's opinion on this because he's a big fan of crypto. Benji, do you like Ethereum or do you think it's going to be Cardano? What do you think? You like Doggy Coin. <laughs> doggy Coin, guys.